Hi, I'm Nick Powell, the opinion editor at City and State. Joining me on today's edition of City and State 24 is Peter Ward, the president of the Hotel Trades Council. Peter, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So we're here to talk about the mayor's housing plan and the zoning text amendments, which are um, obviously kind of up for debate right now. And there's been there was a city planning hearing um, on uh, on Wednesday yesterday. Um, you've come out your union, the Hotel Trains Council, among others, and along with 32 BJ and, and 1199, have come out in favor of of the mayor's housing plan. Um, so before we kind of get into uh, the reasons for that, I was just curious from from your perspective. Um, you know how you know on the face of it the Hotel Trades Council um, the, I guess you know there's not there's not a lot in the housing plan that don't necessarily apply to your to your membership based on kind of what what your union you know the role of your union is um, but so so what was kind of why why get on board you know what was the kind of the motivation for endorsing the plan what was what was kind of how does it relate to directly to your membership there's a, there's a number of reasons. Uh, let me start out by saying that uh, um, my members are continually challenged by the rising cost of housing. You may not know this, but we provide health care to hotel workers through a wholly owned medical um, apparatus that's jointly owned between the union and the hotel industry. And we own medical facilities, and out of those facilities we provide health care. Mm. If you live in the Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, or Queens, you use our health centers. We don't have a health center in Staten Island, nor do we have them in uh, Long Island or New Jersey. And members of ours who live out of area have a different coverage. They have a Blue Cross card, which um, is much more costly than our plan. Our plan provides extraordinary coverage for a very good value because we own and operate it and there's no profit motive in it. Sure. So it's in our interest to control as much of the medical encounters that our members have in order to keep our overall cost down on the theory that every dollar that doesn't go to health care is a dollar that can go into somebody's wages. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing more and more and more is that our members are now migrating out to Nassau County, migrating into the far reaches of the city, because they can't access affordable housing. And it has a double consequence. First is, people have to commute longer and their quality of life deteriorates. And the second is that more and more we have to spend large quantities of money to provide health care that's inferior to the health care we could provide to them if they simply could afford to continue to live in the city. So in a very real, real way, uh, it affects the union and it affects our members. Um, but I think it goes way deeper than that. Uh, I want to live in a city, and, I'm, and I think that my members want to live in a city where those of us that contribute mightily to making the city what it is can actually live here and be part of it. I don't want to live in a gilded city where only wealthy people can access housing and only those that stay in the city that aren't wealthy can access housing in the far reaches of the city with the longest subway rides, living in two fair zones, and having the most difficult commutes. And what we're seeing right now, in my view, is a crisis. We're seeing affordable housing disappearing, and we haven't had any meaningful leadership from government on this issue in four decades, from the feds, from the state, or from the city. And so the affordable housing stock is deteriorating and disappearing. And I think, it's a really, I think it's really a question at this stage of the game of not just how does this affect our members in terms of which ones can access affordable housing, but how does it affect the entire city and what type of city do we want to live in? And, and so I think, and I think that my members believe, that we want to live in a city that um, is not just as gilded city that's only a place for the rich. Based on that, we're going to support the May's plan because as bold as it is it's, it, it, and, and, and as difficult as it may be to achieve, it's also courageous and it's the only alternative that I've seen to begin to solve, even scratch the surface of solving this problem in decades. So that all makes perfect sense. 
I, I guess I'm curious about the timing of your endorsement, because obviously the housing plan, he announced the housing plan at the very beginning of his um, administration, and the the announcement of the endorsements from HTC and 32BJ and 1199 have come at a time when, frankly, there's a lot of opposition coming from community boards, from housing advocates, um, specifically to the zoning text amendments on mandatory inclusionary housing and zoning for quality affordability. Um, was why why now? Why was the timing right now to endorse? Um, was it you know a kind of a way for the administration to kind of push back against the the opposition? What, what, I guess I'm curious kind of to get some background on, well, on I, that. I can't speak for 32 BJ. I can speak for sure. Hotel Trades. Right, right. Um, there are people and institutions that have objections to this in one form or another. I respect their right to have objections, and. I hope that there's some, at some point in the future, they can find common ground and get to a place where they can support it. Um, but I believe that this is such a critical, important issue that it's time for us to lend our voice to it. That we can't just sit on the sideline and allow those that have the opposite opinion we have to just simply win the day. So we have to engage and we have to respectfully argue, um, in some cases with friends and colleagues, that at the end of the day, this plan is the only alternative that's out there that has some real hope of preserving affordable housing, which is disappearing rapidly, and beginning to put some new inventory on the marketplace. And while I've heard a lot of people talk about how they're in, in opposition to it, I haven't heard a lot of plans um, that significantly increase the amount of affordable housing or have a better chance of of, of accomplishing these goals.